This guy's 42 too. He was over 40 when he did this transformation, whereas other guys are like, I think Thor was like in his late 20s when he did this first transformation. So what do you, like, of course this guy gets the most heat. He's never been able to be in shape. And then when he's in his 40s, in his 40s, he gets cranked out of his mind. Like, dude. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. Today we are going to be revisiting the, <laughs> the trend fiend himself, Kumail Nanjiani. Uh, potentially trend fiend, we don't actually know, but you know. So his new buff body sparks steroid racism accusations. Jesus. So I haven't actually read this yet. I just knew it'd be a good topic to cover because uh, you know, he's recently gone from, you know, pudgy nerd lifetime guy to being a fucking goddamn specimen and a half and he looks amazing now and has failed to touch on his use of exogenous hormones whatsoever even when uh, directly you know confronted with the topic basically um so and we'll get into that after i'll get into the podcast where he essentially was talking about trt without talking about trt or trt clinics and whatnot and uh yeah so this uh, article by new york post after posting a photo of himself looking ultra ripped, actually, let's go watch the video first. I'll react to that. This photo of Camille Nanjiani ignited a heated online debate. After posting a pic of himself in a long sleeve shirt where his muscles are visible throughout, Nanjiani was accused by social media users of abusing, not even using, abusing steroids. The fans were quick to come to his defense. All right, so Chris Evans gets jacked for Captain America, hard eyes. Chris Hemsworth gets jacked for Thor, hard eyes. Chris Pratt gets jacked for Star-Lord, hard eyes. Um, yeah, okay. Kumail Nanjiani gets jacked for Eternals. He's clearly using steroids. I can't quite see what's the difference. Well, anyone using heart eyes is a fucking chick, and I'm pretty sure it's not the chicks that are calling out the dude for using gear. It's all the guys that are calling out guys for using gear. And I'm pretty sure that if you go into Chris Hemsworth's pictures of him when he's sauced out of his tree, there are quite a few dudes doing the same shit. If you're going to post a picture where you look saucy as fuck and you are a closet unnatural people are going to comment on it that's what happens on instagram so the reason chris heavens and chris pratt don't get a lot of heat is perhaps because they actually might be natural um you know and they don't post like saucy ass pics like shirtless and shit like chris hemsworth and kumail nanjiani is like the biggest uh, offender of thirst trap saucy pics so hemsworth and nanjiani like from what i i assume are probably the main guys that get uh, accusations because they look the most sauced and frankly, they probably are the most sauced of the four dudes. So it seems pretty fucking expected for anyone to be like, does any dude go heart eyes on a fucking guy's shirtless picture? No, you know, at least the straight ones don't. So it's like, you know, it's pretty fucking obvious what's going on here. It's, do you think there's chicks in the comment section that are like, you are on fucking trend, dude? Like, obviously not. Notice how y'all only make fun of the men of color, but not your white faves. Dude, no one gets spared in the natty or not discussion. All of the guys that are white, whatever, like they, everyone gets talked about exactly the same. If you're a star in the spotlight and you made a dramatic, like keep in mind too, the transformation of Nanjiani was like one of the most dramatic of all to the point where his face is not even recognizable there was like a this tweet i was tagged in how the fuck do you make your jaw swole and then it has this before and after where the dude literally doesn't even look like the same dude like at least hemsworth and shit like look like the same guy when they're done so like it's not i don't think it had race any has anything to do with it i just think he went from a fat nerd to a saucy motherfucker and he looks amazing now but he gets the most heat because he had the most dramatic transformation that was the most clearly saucy you know it's the most obvious saucy transformation of all of the celebrities probably so right, this is the comment here just derek underscore fitness 
Uh, that's my Twitter, by the way, because I'm on Twitter so fucking much. <laughs> and it's definitely worth following me. Uh, but anyway, it's like, yeah, this has nothing, in my opinion, to do with race. And I think these guys are just fucking trying to make something out of nothing. And it, it, this is literally about dramatic transformations and not talking about gear. The more dramatic your transformation is, if you go from a twig or a fat twig to a sauce fiend and a half, you are going to get people commenting in your comment section. That is what is expected. Dan Gianni took his physical transformation seriously when preparing for his role in Marvel's upcoming superhero film, Eternals. Yeah, I will say he definitely took it pretty fucking serious considering he doesn't even look like the same human anymore. In 2019, the Silicon Valley star caused a frenzy online when he posted this shirtless thirst trap. Yeah, if you at least look moderately close to this the rest of your life, you would not have caused a frenzy online. But instead, you went from being skinny fat, literally not even looking like you've worked out ever, to being more jacked and shredded than 99.9% .9 of the population. So this has nothing to do with race in my opinion this is literally just the most dramatic hollywood transformation potentially ever you know this guy's in the running with like christian bale and like bale if you actually consider like body recomp transformations and not just rebounding from like literally depriving yourself of food to the point that you're fucking emaciated and then rebounding um this is probably the most dramatic transformation i think of off the top of my head like even the amir the amir khan one which is super dramatic it was uh um if i recall correctly it was not even uh i think part of it was a rebound you know with kumail he had never achieved this in his life and then he went to just insane like the most nutty transformation of all of them potentially and uh this is why dude nagiani 42 wrote beneath the instagram picture he posted over the weekend modestly displaying his this guy's 42 too he was over 40 when he did this transformation, whereas other guys are like, I think Thor was like in his late 20s when he did this first transformation. So what do you, like, of course this guy gets the most heat. He's never been able to be in shape. And then when he's in his 40s, in his fucking 40s, he gets cranked out of his mind. Like, dude, this is fucking obvious. Um, so here's the picture everyone's freaking out about and his hair looks fucking great. Let's see. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong with this uh, picture, in my opinion. Let me... Uh, do a split screen here of what I am seeing and go through the comments. So uh, here we go. He's chilling here in the uh, brown long sleeve. It's not even that tight, dude. Like it's, it just looks good. You know, it's like not overly fitted. He looks fine. He's just chilling there with his goddamn cement block jaw from the heavens. He looks like that like blockhead guy from uh, Super Mario 64, like the first boss on the top of that mountain. Good times. Um, so anyway, like the fact that he transformed his face that much into like that much of a Chad fucking squared off jaw is like insane. And then also made his body just insane. Like that shows how much of a difference losing fat makes when you go from skinny fat to shredded and your face literally does not even resemble what it once did, you know? So that's just further motivation to get shredded this spring, you know, next summer, whatever it is. So let's go through the comments. He has 588 comments. Nathan from, uh, is this a Gymshark guy? Happy New Year, brother. I wonder if they're actually friends. Uh, join my hair club. <laughs> um, maybe go to a barber like a normal person. Wear a mask, of course, but still, just go to a barber. I think his hair looks good, dude. Fuck, give him a break. Jeez. And good for him for having sick hair when he is in his 40s on gear. That is fucking hard to do. Uh, let's see. Damn, bro, you've, you've inspired me. Again, it's probably just genetics, but I mean, <laughs> good hair should be uh, recognized on gear, in my opinion. Um, Kumail, I think your muscles are getting more out of control in your hair. Crying fucking laughing face. Crying. It's so funny. I literally had tears fall out. Uh, let's see. I like you no matter how you look. I really don't even see anyone saying anything about steroids yet. Like, I've gone through quite a few comments. In this picture, your nose looks like the Volcom skate logo. This is in no way an insult. <laughs> okay. Um, bloody hell, hench as fuck. Swole. Legend says every third post of Kumail is flexing in front of food. Dude, I have not seen one steroid comment yet. I feel like your Instagram is you trying to prove to us that you eat food. I personally still don't believe it. 
Um, have you had plastic surgery within the last few years? I'd ask a woman the same thing. People just don't believe that he got this shredded. Like when you, it's that dramatic. When you get shredded, your face looks fucking way different, dude. Um, dude, I'm still scrolling and I don't see anything about steroids. I am impressed by that cake and by your swole delts. Is there a trend in there? Okay, that's the first one I see. Uh, let's see. I don't know, but I feel like you look worse than before. Jesus Christ. Like, how, dude? He looks fucking awesome. Dude, I've literally gone through over a hundred comments and haven't seen more than one trend comment and really nothing about steroids in general. Like, I thought I would see more overall just general steroid comments. But instead, we find one, one trend comment, and that's it so far. Man, this is boring. Show us your blood work. There, I guess, I guess that's sort of one. Uh, let's see. Okay, some injection symbols. Where's the juice? Um, steroids are insane. Did Instagram like bury these all at the bottom because they don't like them? That'd be interesting. You look great and not at all like a swollen face steroid monster. Jeez, harsh. His fucking, he's way more shredded, dude. What are you talking about? Um, what kind of implant did you get for your jaw? Man, people are naive. Love your past work, but the steroid use here is painfully clear. Your face is literally night and day different. You do you, but this is misleading as fuck. Okay, here are all the toxic comments. Uh, is masculine, is masculinity hating socialist douche who tries to impose his backwards dystopian Hollywood politics on hardworking men and women done watching you in all caps. It's time to stop supporting you left wing psychos who enjoy the spoils of a privileged life, but are intent on lecturing the rest of us on how to live a good amount of HGH human growth hormone as part of his diet. Ah, Hollywood magic, the kingdom of hypocrisy by the wolf and the Phoenix, the steroids LMAO. Have you been, I see you've been visited by your uncle Roy D. Funny. Hilarious, actually. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Honestly, most of them seem to be buried at the bottom. I don't know if in Instagram's algorithm just like doesn't want people to see them, but it was the first however many hundred comments were uh, pretty favorable and they kind of started devolving near the bottom. But I can see uh, why people would be saying that. You know, it's pretty common, to be honest. If you're not going to talk about your unnatural status, people are going to talk about it for you. So... Not too, uh, not too surprising. So anyways, let's see. Many haters have since taken to Twitter to theorize about whether the big sick Oscar nominee took steroids to bulk up, but the comedian's fans were quick to jump in and call such speculation racist and body shaming. Body shaming Kumail Nanjiani for being jacked is way weird, one defender explained of the controversy in a now viral tweet, noting that various white actors have done the same super soldier program and never gotten any flack for it. Okay, so this is pretty much all the same shit I just pointed out in that video. Kumail Nanjiani looks awesome as fuck, and I wish I looked at half as good as him. Y'all clearly didn't learn your lessons from making fun of Chadwick Boseman's physical appearance. Notice how y'all only make fun of men of color, but not your white faves. Um, so I think this just goes back to what I said earlier. To be fair, though, I don't know what was said about uh, Chadwick Boseman, but I speculated. I think it was not him getting jacked. I think it was something totally different. So I don't know how that is uh, really relevant here. Yeah, so they people made fun of him for being thin when he was sick, which is fucked up, but I don't think really relevant to Kumail literally turning into a goddamn Super Saiyan from a fat nerd, you know? Like, how is that fucking comparable, in my opinion? So, let's see. Reps for Nanjiani did not immediately respond to the post request for comment. Man, imagine that having reps, dude. Like, not just commenting on your own shit. Yeah. You, you literally have your own Instagram comments and you're like, I'll let my rep fucking handle it. Um, I never thought I'd be one of those people who would post a thirsty sh shirtless, but I've worked way too hard for way too long. So here we are. That's what he said last year. Um, yeah. So anyway, these were the original pictures that really sparked the controversy. Looking fucking nuts. And I made a video on it a while ago. And notably, uh, Rob McElhaney, the video I did on him earlier last year, him and Kumail were in an interview with uh, Dak Shepard and they happened to touch on the subject of men's physiques and bodybuilding and steroid use and uh, subtly imply, you know, or at least Rob subtly implies his, uh, you know, his use in order to transform his physique and Kumail was sort of chilling there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's guilty by association in this, but he doesn't seem to uh, 
you know, contradict what he's saying too much. And it seems pretty obvious what the fuck is going on. And especially with the transformations and how dramatic they are, more, more notably the Kumail one than the Rob one, it's pretty obvious what's going on in my opinion. So I'll play that, uh, I'll cut out a clip from that video just so you, so you don't have to watch the whole thing from the Rob McElhenney video. And you can hear uh, my commentary on that specific part from last year. And then I'll cut back to me after. In this interview with, like I said earlier, Kamel Nanjiani, they get into some of the details about how they've been able to sustain their physiques, achieving it, the work that goes into it, the work that goes into sustaining it now, and how it's, it's so easy now to get back into shape after getting in shape the first time. But it'll come back fast. That's true. That's the thing. Like, uh, so I stopped. And then, in fact, for my other show, I thought maybe I'll gain a bunch of weight again just because I feel like this character might be a little overweight. And then I, I really couldn't do it. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll just see if I can get back into shape. And instead of it taking four months, it took like three weeks and I could get right back into shape, which is wild. It's interesting that you said that it's really true. There's a three week sweet spot where you're mm -hmm. like, I'm super relaxed. I'm not working out as hard. I look the fucking same. I yes. look great. This the rest of my life which honestly is just the biggest red flag in itself that they're both still on at least optimized levels of therapeutic testosterone replacement therapy to support their physiques after their peaked transformations and the only reason it would be easy to support these body compositions and get back into shape whenever they want at the drop of a hat within a few weeks is because they have that base level foundation of muscle mass that they've built throughout their hormone use to support that expenditure of calories and maintain that muscularity. As kids, I, we're all roughly the same age. Yeah. And so as I was leading up to this interview, I was kind of thinking, we did grow up in a unique time period. So we grew up in the era of heavy, heavy steroid use where Mr. Universe went from 178 pounds to 250, right? The era of Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno. And now those guys were in our movies when we were kids. So we were, I want to say, one of the first generations to be introduced to this body type that is preposterous by all measures. Yeah, yeah. That's and, right. And that played, it must have played some role subconsciously or psychologically. So in that part of the podcast, um, Dax and Rob and Kumail essentially touch on how their physique aspirations were heavily inspired by um, role models in their youth that were heavy steroid users and that you know not so subtly implies that they very likely acknowledged the likelihood that they would need to deploy exogenous androgen use at some point in their lives to achieve comparable physiques to whatever their dream physique it was that they aspired to in their youth and the nail in the coffin on this whole thing really is later in the podcast when rob essentially actually admits to testosterone replacement therapy one thing that i didn't even realize wasn't happening this is a benefit i think it's a benefit but one thing i didn't even realize wasn't happening from the ages of about 14 <laughs> till about 37 a man every single day wakes up with an erection mm. right every okay. single day mm -hmm. okay. and then you kind of i forgot like it just yeah. goes, just goes away. But then all of a sudden I'm increasing my testosterone mm -hmm. back to what I was like when I was 20. And then the next thing I know, I'm waking up every day and I'm ah. like, oh, what's this? Yeah. Wow. This is fun. Yeah. Right. I remember I, this was what it was like for 30 years. And then I started to get depressed for a quick second was like, I could have done this at any point when I was in my twenties, when my testosterone was like levels were like they are in their twenties, I could have done this and I didn't. So there, Rob literally says he increases testosterone levels. And while he doesn't literally word for word say he visited a doctor to get a prescription for exogenous testosterone use, it's pretty damn obvious at this point that he at minimum restored his testosterone levels to that of a healthy young male in his 20s because that's exactly what he just said he did. Okay, so there they are, you know, both talking about gear, both talking about... Uh, you know, how good, you know, they feel with their bodies, you know, the way they are and they wish, uh, you know, how uh, much easier it is to get in shape now that they've done it before. And, um, you know, Rob basically outs himself and says without actually blatantly saying it, um, he, he pretty much fucking said it. And then Kumail doesn't say it himself, but it's pretty obvious that what's going on here. And, um, you know, again, though, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not like, oh, fucking shit on him because he's unnatural. It's more the part where he doesn't really talk about what he did 
that people don't like because it's like expectedly if you make such a dramatic transformation it's a bit you know people find it misleading when you are especially if you're posing with your new physique and showing it off and you're not really talking about what you did to do it and how unrealistic it is to expect that kind of a transformation at your age with your genetics and you're just like look at me look at all the hard work i did and then you're sort of like leaving off the table entirely that you use gear you know, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. TRT should be more widely accepted where it's not super taboo and like weird and you know, like you get shit on for talking about it. Like these guys should be able to openly talk about it and not get fucking lit up. So they hide it, which is probably much worse in my opinion, but you know, maybe not. Maybe the reps tell them to don't tell anyone. Who knows if they even tell their reps, I don't know. You know, a lot of people will not even tell their fucking girlfriend. They won't even tell their best friends if they're using shit. So I wouldn't be surprised if Kumail and his fucking doctor are the only guys who know. You never know. So, um, you know, the everyone has a bad taste in their mouth just from people who don't tell the truth, obviously. So you can see why Kumail gets heat because everyone pretty much knows what's going on. He will not just outright say it. He will instead talk about how hard he worked for it and blah, blah, blah. Again, you have to give the guy credit. The crazy transformation he did would not be achievable without hard work. No matter how much shit he took, you would not get to the body composition he did without working extremely hard and dieting extremely diligently and having an iron willpower to not fuck it up. But it doesn't mean that that supersedes the help from exogenous hormones to build the muscle he did um, in the speed he did too. Like how quickly he recomped was fucking insane. So, you know, obviously the gear helps a lot and it's the reason why he looks the way he does, in my opinion. You know, I can't prove it, but it's pretty, uh, to me, it's uh, pretty clear cut. And, um, but again, that's not to take away from his hard work, but again, I think the, uh, the flack he's getting is coming, is very expected. And anyone who thinks it's unjustified is like, yeah, you know, like if you don't want people to fucking shit on you for being unnatural, just t say you're unnatural then people won't shit on you anymore, you know? Like that's, it's a pretty simple solution. So, you know, just be uh, transparent. That's what the audience likes. That's what your fans want to see. And that's what you should probably do. And it's just unfortunate that uh, in Hollywood, they have to keep secrets about their fucking Propecia use and keep secrets about their TRT and blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's how, how it is, I guess, dude. So anyways, I think kind of a ridiculous uh, tweet storm by some of the people who are saying this is racist, which I do not think it is at all. I just think this is the most dramatic transformation fucking ever, pretty much. And uh, if a white guy did this, the same thing would have happened. People would have been like, dude, this guy took hella shit. You know, Hemsworth did not get zero heat during his transformation, even though he had a far better baseline than Nanjiani, so it's a bit less heat than Nanjiani. You know, it's a bit more realistic to think that maybe Hemsworth did it naturally than a guy who's been skinny fat his entire life and he's in his 40s and all of a sudden turns into a goddamn specimen, you know? So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, my pre-designed lab test panels, um, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas that design myself from scratch, um, and anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.